today, this is Derek Murphy. I'm talking about a new tool today, which is called Human Generator. So it's an AI tool where you can generate uh, realistic photos of people. Um, for book cover design especially, it's difficult to get the right kind of outfit for urban fantasy or epic fantasy or something. So there's some promise with this tool. I'm going to show you how it works and what some of the other um, alternatives might be. So for the past decade or so, most cover designers have used something like Daz 3D where you can buy packages of these people and pose them exactly how you want and dress them up how you want and then save them as a PNG and use um, a lot of before Daz 3D. If I wanted to make like a fantasy or an epic urban fantasy cover, I would have to buy like stock photos of people. But the problem with epic fantasy or urban fantasy is that people don't get dressed up in uh, really cool vampire hunting gear or whatever, or it looks cheesy, it looks like cosplay and not realistic. So Daz 3D allowed book cover designers to make much cooler book covers um, by creating people like this. The problem is it's kind of a pain to you know, buy the software. Uh, you get the software, you have to buy each individual package. It gets pretty expensive. I was spending hundreds of dollars on these packages just to make like one cover. So then it eats into your profit. But there are also people who are just selling Daz assets. So you could buy like a package of a particular uh, character in 10 different poses and then use those on your series. The problem is that any other author could buy the same package so that you know, your covers would have the same poses. Most cover designers will change the face at least, but you might see something too similar. If it's a really good asset, then a lot of other cover designers will use it on pre-mades. And then more recently, I've been using Midjourney. This is a Midjourney 5 mostly. So Midjourney makes really, really good fantasy art images. Um, and I haven't really used these on covers yet because there's a lot of controversy. But the quality of the images that Midjourney can make, especially for fantasy art, uh, is pretty amazing. So I've made tons and tons of art, but I haven't really found a place to use all of them. Uh, the problem is that these are Midjourney does really good at finished images. So like it's one piece of the background and the characters. Um, you wouldn't really want to mess it up or play with it, but if you really wanted a, a custom design, um, usually you would want to create a character and then crop out the background and then add the background so you can add all the depth and the layers and things. Midjourney 4 was actually better at uh, the fantasy art and the aesthetic. Midjourney 5 is a lot more photorealistic for making like realistic photos of people, especially modern people. It does a much better job, but with fantasy stuff, uh, it looks a little like cosplay and it doesn't look as, uh, as nice. So this is a new tool that I just discovered. I think it's free to use. Let me see if I can go back. Anyway, I think it's free to use right now. I'm not sure if it will always be free to use, but um, I think it's pretty new. And down here, you can put in a prompt. So there's a beautiful, obese Turkish woman with dark skin. Uh, you can give a prompt just like Midjourney. So try you know, to give the best prompt for what you want, and it might give it to you. Uh, but you can also do a lot of cool things here with changing the age, the gender, skin tone, ethnicity. Um, and then down here, you can do poses. So these look like Daz 3D render poses uh, if you wanted a specific pose. I would love to see more poses, but I'm sure those would get added. Uh, for like urban fantasy, often they will have one hand raised, and that's where you would add a fireball to show magic. Uh, let me try this pose. You can choose uh, the hair. I'm going to try bangs, I guess. Hair color dark. I added a new prompt down here so I can update the human. Um, and now we'll see what it gives me. You'd probably have to spin this a few times to get um, something usable. And then, whoops, it's probably still curvy body overweight. Still Turkish too, so I'll try something else. Uh, you can also upload a face from your photo. I haven't really tried this yet. I, I think this would be pretty interesting if you want to do um, like professional photos for a job application or something. You could probably make something that looks really good and also looks like you. There's also skin tone here. I'm going for a vampire type girl, so I'll do porcelain. 
And then with clothing, you can choose pretty specifically uh, what they're wearing. So clothing style, there's all this different stuff. So I don't know what it's going to give me, but I chose punk. Um, colors, I'm going to go with cool or dark if I can find it. There I found the black clothing. I've chosen a, a blouse and a miniskirt. Underwear, I don't think it's necessary, but um, interesting that it gives you the option, I guess, for what you want to create. And if I go down here to update, it should give me a new image. So this actually worked really, really well. Um, this is kind of what I was going for, sort of a urban fantasy, dark academy, school uniform, which it isn't quite, but um, I like the outfit a lot. I like that it looks kind of realistic. The only thing is with something like this, this one's actually pretty clean, so you could crop out the background pretty easily and put that somewhere else. Uh, you can also change a background, and I'm not sure that it will. You can do old staircase or library. That's pretty awesome. So I tried a couple of these, and they don't look great for what I'm trying to create because I want to do dark fantasy, and these are all kind of modern realistics. Um, it keeps the same pose. That's kind of limiting. I wonder if... Um, Hey, it's limiting because I'm always getting the exact, exact same thing. So I wonder if I just don't choose a pose. Maybe it would just be something more random. Or maybe just something more casual. It won't stand out quite as well. I wish they could do like a transparent background, but I don't think um, there are any AI tools that can make a 3D render without a background yet. Here's a new version that was edgy. So yeah, it's mostly the background that doesn't work at all. Um, the, the costume works pretty well. So if I generated a bunch of these, I would get some pretty good character renders um, that would be something I could probably use on a book cover. I'd probably want to swap the face, although it's doing a pretty good job of the face also. The other thing I wonder, this one is too tall, so I'd preferred if it was more of a standard book cover size. Um, so I'm not sure why I can't change the size or the ratio of the picture, but maybe I just haven't found that option yet. If I go up here to the human templates, I see what other people have generated, I think. Um, so I'm trying to use it for something very difficult, which is, you know, dark urban fantasy. Um, but some of these, if you just want like a picture of a person, uh, it does a pretty decent job. Uh, not quite photorealistic. I can tell that some of these are AI generated. I think the advantage over something like Midjourney um, is that you can really be specific with the type of clothing and um, the body type and the skin color and all that stuff. If you added all of these things as prompts in Midjourney, I don't think you'd get this level of detail to get the character the way that you want it. Also, I checked down here. It's weird that these are the hair colors, like gray, white, peach, orange. There's no like blonde hair or red hair. This is one in a forest with uh, ginger hair. That's a pretty neat image. Her face is a little bit messed up, but it's it's pretty cool. Uh, it's not as dark and moody as I would want it to be for the purpose I'm using it for, um, but this one is clean enough. I could get the background out and then use it for, for something. I was trying to do something like this in Midjourney, and it was really having trouble with like this style of dark academy, almost school uniform. Um, so this tool is working pretty neat. Definitely something I'd play around with for uh, character art, for like generating characters that you want to write about, just for kind of um, brainstorming during your writing process. It can be really helpful to make pictures so that you can refer to them. I didn't even notice if you go down far enough uh, you can see outerwear, so I could do a leather jacket, boots, and then accessories. I was trying to get more of a close-up uh, face picture if you just wanted like a headshot, and that's not working as well as the full body ones, which I think did a really good job on, on the clothing and stuff. And it's also kind of weird. I think I let's try a floral wallpaper. Um, I saw this girl before, which means maybe if you always put in the 
same details. It'll always give you the same picture, which is kind of weird because I think with generative AI, uh, it should always be different. But this is giving me basically the same face. So I wonder if like when you choose a ethnicity, maybe there's only a handful of faces that it's using as a reference. And then because the poses are limited, you're always seeing the same pose and the same faces. Um, it is pretty cool with the, the floral background and stuff. Let me try one more full body one. So I don't love this one, but it is sort of interesting, kind of a hipster style. I probably didn't change the... Yeah, it does say punk, so it's not really getting the punk. But maybe that's just because of the floral background. It's interesting when I put a cityscape and I choose a uh, ethnicity like Vietnamese or Taiwanese, which I tried, um, it'll put language characters in the background. It'll do Vietnamese or Chinese characters. So it kind of adjusts the background with the ethnicity. I'm not sure if I, I like or I don't like how the details don't really change. Um, so for this character, where I've chosen the brown hair, um, the ethnicity, it's giving me the same shirt and the brown skirt and the brown boots for every picture. So I'm changing like a few of the things and regenerating. Um, and I would have imagined that the whole picture would be totally different, but it's actually keeping a lot of consistency, which could be good or bad, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Anyway, a uh, fun new tool. I think stuff like this is going to get a lot smarter. Um, so this is a tool that has a lot of options. I don't know that it's better than what's already out there, but it is something unique and interesting, which is why I thought I would share it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about all this. Play with it if you want. Thanks. Bye-bye.